This video is brought to you by Ace of 12 Productions. Please subscribe to my channel and don't forget to enjoy the videos. Also, please try and comment and rate the videos. Thank you. Hey guys, Asip here. Uh, just doing another video. Uh, one thing I just want to say quickly is I got rid of all my uh, C++ videos. All of them gone. I'm going to be starting this uh, series again because um, one thing that's extremely important when learning a language uh, like C++ because it's so advanced uh, everything needs to be covered very thoroughly and it needs to be covered correctly as well um, and when I first started the C++ series um, I wasn't doing that correctly so uh, you guys wouldn't be learning properly and you'd be learning wrongly like I said so uh, I'm just gonna start this series again and also uh, I just got back from a three-week holiday so um, unfortunately there's only one more week left before I have to go back to uh, school and uh, summer break is up so uh, I'll try and fit in as many tutorials as I can uh, really, I'm just going to try and uh, do as many of these uh, C++ ones, like, uh, yeah, do as many of them as I can to uh, cover all the ones I just deleted. Um, just so everyone knows, I did also delete um, the two making a game in C++ videos. Those were kind of poor. Um, when I first started my C++ series also, uh, I wasn't very far into C++ myself, uh, whereas now I'm a bit more competent in the language itself, uh, I'm not an expert though, you know, I can uh, try and help you with some simple uh, bug errors, but I'm not no nowhere near perfect. Um, anyways, let's just uh, jump straight into it. So, uh, first thing you're gonna need is a compiler and an IDE, uh, preferably. Um, I'm gonna be using uh, Visual C++ 2008 Express Edition from Microsoft. Um, whereas before I was sort of juggling between Dev C++ and uh, MS VC++, uh, I'm just going to be using this one for the entire series now. Um, kind of had some difficulties with it at first, but it's, um, it's a very, it's very good, um, when it, when you start looking at very big files. So, uh, if you want to, though, you can use Dev C++. It's very simple. You just install it, and then you go file new source file, and just start typing in your code, and you can find the uh, compiling and run buttons yourself. Uh, for Visual C++, you'll just need to go file new uh, project uh, Win32. It's a Win32 console application in the Win32 section. Uh, I'll just name it uh, tutorial. You can name it whatever you want. And uh, in this um, project, you can put all your uh, files from this series. Uh, that's I think that's what I'm going to do, just to uh, keep it contained in one place. Uh, so this wizard will just pop up. You want to click next, ignore all this stuff. You don't really need to know anything about it. And then just tick the uh, empty project box under the additional options and click finish. Keep this as a console application here as well. Uh, and when this is done... Okay, here we go. Uh, you just want to click, right click source files, click add, click new item, and click uh, go to code and click the C++ file and then name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it begin, because this is the beginning of the series, of course. And then click add. Okay, and um, just close this off. I'm going to uh, type in some code. You can type along, and I'll go over it after I finish typing in the code. Uh, just because it that way it's easier. You'll see.
Okay, now one thing I want to say first is uh, C++ ignores all white space. Uh, I think in some situations you're not allowed to have white space or something. Uh, I'm not entirely sure about that, uh, but for the majority of the time it ignores white space. So the space between the main and then the first opening parentheses is entirely optional. Uh, and these spaces between the parentheses is entirely optional again. You could easily write it like this, or like this, or like this, or however, okay. I ju it's just a preference of mine to write it like this. Okay, so what we have here is, um, uh, well, two brief statements. Uh, first we have this, um, command here, and it says include IO stream. Now inside IO stream we have some uh, uh, parts. Well, we have some things necessary for outputting uh, outputting text and other stuff to the screen. To well, the stand standard output flow, which is generally a console screen. It's what it's what it's going to be in this project, um, and. This is just called a preprocessor directive, and it runs before the compiler. It's just so um, when we start typing in commands to say output this, uh, it knows we want uh, we're going to be using the stuff inside this file. Okay, and uh, these we need these and these uh, lesser and greater than signs and these just mean that uh, you'll find this file inside the files uh, where um, inside the folder with all the files that came with the compiler uh, so basically to sum it up just in very short terms we need this to output text to the standard output flow which is in this case the console and here, if we, if I just highlight this, you'll see O stream, which could stand for output stream, and it does. And no, uh, no prizes for guessing what the I stands for. That's also input. So I O stream allows us to take in input and give out output. Okay, moving on. Uh, just open up these curly braces here. Um, now we have what what this is called is uh, a function header um, and we're not going to get into it because functions come in later on but basically all functions require a return type which we won't talk about we won't talk about until we go with functions again but they just need a return type a name and then a pair of parentheses after the name uh, so here you can see we have a function that returns some kind of value called an int, uh, a name of main, and we have these two parentheses here, and it also needs these two curly braces, um, and generally we indent code in, in between curly braces, just so it's a lot clearer to read and it's way easier, just basically that's all it is. You could easily just start typing code in like this, or you could start typing code in like this. This is just considered more neater, and programmers will appreciate it more. Uh, now another thing we need to go over, um, very simple, is comments. Here you can see I've started with the double forward slash, and then I've typed in some uh, text here. Now comments, which is what this is, are completely ignored by the compiler and they're merely here for uh, to help us humans understand the code. So either if you have a big project and when you, you go away from it for a while, say to have a drink or a bite to eat or something, and then when you come back you're kind of confused, generally you'll uh, comment um, main things in your program so when you come back to it you understand what's happening and you don't have to spend hours reading through your code you'll be like hey that goes to there that goes to there that goes to there when i'm confused you can just have these comments telling you what's happening um, now this is called a single line comment um, 